There we are. Hello, everyone. Hello. This is the Cars and Bids live show. I have with me Kenan. You know Kenan. Yes. And then also we have Filippo, my Hello. longtime nemesis. Yep. <laughs> and today we are going here. to... Yes, nemesis. we are proud. Today we are going to talk about the New Hampshire primary. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. We're not going to do that. <laughs> Specifically... <laughs> Um, instead, we're going to talk about cars. Kenan, start us off. <laughs> Kenan, well, Kenan, what sort of cars do we have today? We have a lot of we have a lot of really good stuff on the site right, right now. Uh, we recently instituted a new feature called Featured. Have uh, you seen this featured? This has changed my entire experience. Yes. Yeah, so at the top of our website, we now have this banner with oh. some cars that. Doug personally will go through and select <laughs> that are cool, and you can kind of scroll through it. Uh, mobile has a slightly different um, approach. Look at that Z1. And they're also located like as you scroll down throughout the list. Thing, you see but, that Z1? But yeah, we have quite a few really Click cool cars. Click on that Z1. Yeah, Z1. Look at that. So cool. The right lead image as well, because the doors are down the way it should the be. The doors are down and the snow is out. That's, that's how it's right. done. That's right. But Z1, oh, oh, so our, cool. Why don't I have a Z1? Why don't you have a Z1? I thought about it. Because they're expensive. <laughs> they are really expensive. <laughs> it's a lot of money <laughs> for an E30 with the doors that go down. <laughs> I, I tried to convince Kenan to buy a Z1. After Why don't you buy a Z1? I would be kind of into that, but the doors are really expensive. I'll well, pay for any door issues. Wow. I'll give you a warranty. That's an awful But you, you have to let me them? use the Z1 whenever I want, including all summer. <laughs> On the East Coast. Well, look, I'll pay for the I'm shipping. I'm not shipping it. I'll ship it. Man, you know, this could be a deal that works out for everybody. You get the pain of owning... I get the pain. There's no way I win here. But it what is do you mean? Cool. I'm paying for the door issues. It's true. Also, fundamentally, it is. An, yeah, an, Kenan, an let's do this. Let's buy this car. What do the people say? People, what do you say? But Nobody has said cool. anything about our Z1 decision. People, should we buy a Z1? I like the idea of a Z1 with like a an, S, an S52 swap would be pretty nice. cool. Someone says, why not Z8? No, you don't understand. The doors don't go down. <laughs> you don't the understand. Don't the down. Z8's Four. doors are regular. Someone says maybe a Z8. Do these people not get the concept? What? <laughs> the well, comments always say do Kenan? it. <laughs> comments Should Kenan do. cut off his ear live on camera? What do the comments say? <laughs> the yeah. comments will always say yes. Oh, wait. I, there's a poll. Kenan, I'm going to vote. Can, can I vote? Can you go to featured? Oh, hover over auctions. No, hover over the oh. auctions. Okay, oh, we're not actually going to buy the Z1 for a lot of reasons, but I would like a Z1. Okay, we have this featured thing now. And yep. so all these yep. cars so are featured. Also, now, what happens is this. What happens is this. I select the cars that we're featuring, and it's very exciting for me because they're at the top of the whole website, and they have all these pictures, and they're very beautiful. So, I, yeah, I selected this M5 Tour. Yeah, it's a great car. Yeah, that's a Click great on car. that. That's yeah, a cool car. That's a cool car. Where in the Midwest is this thing located? It's in Texas. <laughs> it's in Texas? <laughs> Look at this cool thing. Top. So cool. Oh, man. The pictures cool. make it seem even cooler because it looks like it's about to go set a speed record. <laughs> Look yeah. at that. Oh, that's so Oh, and that, cool. that BMW M5 license plate. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Why don't I own an M5 Touring? Like, Why don't you? They're not, sure. they're not as expensive because as you, don't you might like think. like fast performance expensive things. <laughs> <So true. laughs> Those are all of the reasons you or want to good. Go. Or good. I would buy a nice, like, you already have a nice, you have a nice. This car is too good for Filippo. Filippo's problem is that he, like, he, like, he like Plus, perpetually kind of hates himself. Filippo and I drive <laughs> manual transmissions in very different ways. Filippo so, believes in, sh in shifting before 1,000 RPM, keeping it like at 800. That's where he shifts. Going for fuel he wants to be in fifth gear before he's out of the driveway. And that's, that's not yeah, If it's a long from. enough driveway, yeah. <laughs> that's not far from the truth. No, this car, you, you don't do that. with. Someone cars. asked, why doesn't Kenan have one of those? Because Kenan's already got a, the sedan. Kenan actually doesn't like wagons. This yeah. is a, here's something we I should discuss. I don't love wagons. I don't so. love wagons. I've come around on them more, and I think the E34 Touring is especially That's nice gorgeous. looking. It's a really good looking car. Kenan, why don't you love wagons? Well, wait a minute. Go back one picture. Oh, God. Because no, Kenan does not have thing. a need for practicality in his life. Oh, I didn't realize the interior. Well, go to that picture of the sunroof. You know, I, I thought this thing was in like a rural area where they were like doing high speed runs. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a hospital complex. <laughs> right there. That's Texas. <laughs> Disappointing. <laughs> I thought after they took the pictures, the guy went out and drove at 185 miles an hour. And I love those wheels so much. Those are just so cool. Yep. Love the throwing yep. stars. This car had some of the most interesting wheels of any car in the history of wheels. Man, that interior. Wow. <laughs> that because interior what was the other wheel? Can it's blue. You don't uh, know this? You don't know this? The, Show him the, the turbine. The E34 M5. I also got the M Parallel, I believe. No, no, no. What, what was the crazy wheel in the E34 M5? Show him. The turbines. Oh, the turbines. Um. They like it was the ugliest thing you will ever see in your life. But it was it was designed so that it would cool the brakes, right? Kenan? Yes, that's right. 
Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I want to see it on car though. <laughs> they look like very white wall. Yeah. Of they're it. so like, ugly. But and it didn't look like a performance car at all. It didn't no. have any reason. I, don't know, I think that looks legit. But they cooled the brakes. Huh? <laughs> the, in but, theory, I think they wow. cooled the brakes. Wow. Um, yeah. Whether or not they cooled the brakes in practice, we're still not sure. Right. Right. And you know whether or not that made any difference to the, <laughs> <laughs> of the car seems very unlikely. <laughs> Um, but, no, 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 but man, that looks that looks so, so good. good. <laughs> it really does. Personally. It's, it's heinous. I mean, oh, that one no, is no, nice, no. but those wheels are so bad. I like this. And, and like obviously, by the way, if I had an E34 M5, I would only want those wheels right. because they're like insane. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Now yeah. this car, though, I didn't realize it was black on blue. Can I bid on this? Is this no reserve? It is not no reserve. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah, I didn't realize it was Fine. black on. But blue. it is black on blue, and that is something. Fine. <laughs> looks great. Um. Oh my gosh, look a lot at that blue. blue. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a very cool It's like Ikea. Uh, this was OE spec this way? I'd be, I'm this so is why we have to have interior pictures on the featured. Because like, what is going on? Right. It appears that this was the... Appears well, scroll up. Spec. Does it have a, does it have a um, expl- diamond black metallic with a black and blue interior? Wow. Yeah. It looks like that was... Wild. Well, how many miles are on this car? Oh, no. No, blue upholstery uh, blue in the upholstery interior. interior. That is uh, well, but I thought it was you've done the same thing, like, of course. So the, the track. I did once blue an interior. Uh, there's a guy named Albert here in San Diego um, who blued my interior. Right. I refer to him only <laughs> as Albert the interior bluer. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I and don't know what his business anybody is called. Anyone? I would shout him out right now. No, it's AP Upholstery. Well yeah, done. AP Upholstery is the name how, of the How much time is left on R8? We should talk about that. Seven minutes. Seven minutes so this left is a, on an R8. So this is one of the featured cars, and it's closing today. Uh, the R8. I, you I, drove I, a V10. I dr- yes, I've driven. Yeah, I've I've driven two R8s ever. One was the they all. Oh, well, that's not true. I've driven several R8s, but all of them have been V10s. That's one wow. of my one of my things. But Ten rule of the newer generation, only the V10 Plus and the uh, RWS. No plebeian V10. Can Regular you since we're talking about Great cars. Can you click on that Volvo 850R? <laughs> we'll get to the Volvo 850R. Click on the Volvo 850R. We will get there. Click on it immediately. <laughs> patience. You I'm going to tell you patience. an interesting... you got seven minutes left on this. We'll come back to the Audi R8. It's got wheels that look like a snowflake. We have 15 minutes left on the Volvo. All right. Click on the Volvo. I'm going to tell you something very interesting about the Volvo. Yeah, I think we've got to give in on this, Kenan. Kind of okay. There's, there's no winning. The VIN of this car, YV1 LS58. That's wow. how it starts. Oh, LS? The VIN of the regular turbo, YV1 LS57. The VIN of the NA cars, YV1 LS55. Okay, we can go back to that right now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, thanks. So the if it was a wagon, it was YV1 LW, but then the 5758 and 55, it all stays the same. Really? Yeah. Interesting. You've learned something I did. Today. Thank you for sharing that knowledge. <laughs> I'm not going to retain also, that. Also, great photos on that A50R. You would retain that if that was, if that was BMW, you would retain that. Yeah, it's the so Volvo true. 850R is very cool. We'll, we'll discuss it more at length. You're, gonna, uh, you're not going to say anything about the R8 other than it has a V10. And well, th- it also has the Diamond Stitch, le- le- the diamond pull up stitch the leather package, which is great. I think, I think the Although R8... Although I wish that they had the TT baseball my, glove interior well, that, available on you, these. Do you know that was fake? Yeah. The stitching yeah. was... It had regular stitching, and then it had baseball know, glove like, on top why, of it. Why did Audi not do it any time besides that? Because I think, I think there were durability issues. <laughs> have you ever been in one? No. Let's just say the, the, the baseball glove stitching is uh, it's fraying. All right. Well, I will say it looks the, like the, a baseball glove that Ty Cobb used. <laughs> the Personally. diamond stitch looks great. To Man, be I fair. love the R8. That's such a great car. Kenan, another car for you to consider. No, it's, no. A, it's an auto. It's an auto. Mm. Kenan right. won't it buy has anything. To be a first gen, and those are those manual first gens are not mm. inexpensive. Kenan won't buy anything with an auto unless it's a Fiat 500e. That's exactly what I was going to say. We, we'll reveal live no right now. That Kenneth is considering buying an electric car. There's technically no transmission. Right, is that so what I you still said? Win. Yeah, because <laughs> electric cars don't have transmissions. I still haven't owned an automatic transmission. Right, that's right. It doesn't it, shift gears. Ergo, it has no transmission. Well, you know what? Then people with electric cars can say they've never owned a car with a transmission. I could also, according to you, I could say that I've never owned a forced induction car because it's naturally aspirated. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. According to you. Yeah, it's naturally aspirated. There you are. I've never owned mm-hmm. a car with forced induction. I think that was my point. It was my point that it's forced induction because no, the no, wind your, blows on it. Your point was that whatever was, my point was, I stand. Right, it's, it's wrong. Whatever. Right. I mean, but electric cars are naturally aspirated. That was my point. Everybody's like mourning the death of the naturally aspirated engine. Right. They failed to understand. What about the Taycan Turbo? 
The Taycan Turbo, despite its name, is naturally aspirated. Mm. I think that's why everybody was so mad about the, them calling it a turbo right. because it's an NA. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's why. Yeah, struck the nail right. firmly on the head there. <laughs> um, but exactly. Uh, but yeah, I have been vaguely considering getting an electric car because I live relatively. I don't have to drive as far as I used to. I moved recently closer to the city, so I don't need to. to to go around as much and now when i drive the m5 like the oil isn't really getting warm and so that's been like kind of and it's as a result the car is also getting like 10 11 miles of the gallon uh which is not great some Um, mornings kenan drives like 10 minutes away from his house most mornings right and he complained recently that the lights changed and now it's green lights the entire way yes they changed (laughs) the light pattern recently so now it's green so the car really has no time to warm right right which is some people would celebrate the fact that they don't have to stop it at a red light every block not me for two miles no, not me. Not kidding. <laughs> you know, if you're going to argue that the Fiat 500e does not have a transmission, so you still only own manual cars, someone who has a Tesla and has only ever owned Teslas could be like, I've never had an automatic. Right. Only NA, only NA non automatics for me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's technically, they've had no trans. Yeah, that's true. They have no transmission. But I, I don't, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know. Doug has said just keep the M5 and drive it around a little bit more and. Maybe that's accurate. I don't know. Or you could buy an R8 V10 Plus. Well, there is that. So can we talk about the fact that this car is essentially a Huracan, but it's more of a Huracant? It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's less. Well, because the Huracan is a Huracan, but this is an Audi. Right. Dude, this yeah. car is like, yeah, it's, it's more understated. Although the R8 gets a lot of attention. Like our friends who have had them like still. Yeah. Look, How much power has, does this car have? Ken? 610. 610, mm-hmm. and it's a naturally aspirated V10? Yep. Yeah. And it, oh. I think white's also the right color with the, the side It, it blade, looks like great. The contrasting side blades. I, uh, think I personally would right. never personally buy a Huracan, but I would buy an R8. Right, because it's subtler. Right. right. Would you buy a 1996 Volvo 850R? Yes. Now, That's a very handy Here's another 850R <laughs> trivia point. I would 100% do that. The 850R was only sold in 96 and 97 model years. Do you know what it was called in 95? Ooh. No. The T5R. Right. Right. And in that model year, it was only offered in yellow, black, or there were 10 that were green. What wow. was the green called? I don't know, but it was heinous. <laughs> <laughs> it was dark green. It was just can, can we look at that A50R? Because clearly we're, we're moving there. We'll come back the, to the, that. The, right? the photos are wonderful. As befits. The yeah, the only drawback great. of this A50R is that it does that. not have uh, the stock wheels. These are turbo wheels, but you can tell it's an R because it has foggies and go into the interior. Here, how's the other? How else can you tell it's an R, Filippo? Tell I'm, us. I'm really sorry to say that I, my knowledge <laughs> does not run that deep. On Alcantara these. seat centers. Wow. Now it's a tip or an automatic, as you would say. All 850Rs in the United States were automatic. Canada got sticks. Really? You really? believe that? Canada. I'm surprised that we're not seeing more people import them. Canada, having all the fun. Well, people do swaps life. now because right. you can do it like in your backyard in a weekend. Like me and Kenan could have a couple of cold ones and Kenan knock it out. <laughs> knock it out. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, of course, owned an A50. Yeah, I know all this stuff because I had an A50 turbo and I always lusted after the R, but I couldn't do it. The R had 18 more horsepower, Alcantara seat centers, bigger wheels, which this one does not have, and fog lights. Is that it? Yeah, look at those foggies. <sighs> um, what, what color was yours? Mine was white. The R was offered in red, black, something else. Man, four M's too. This is like a long That's, term. Yeah, been, R. been here for yep. a long time. Not original to no. California though. I don't think it's four M, but it's close. But it's Kenan, close. do you have anything to say about this car's front wheel drive? It's very cool. It's oh I'm, wow. <laughs> Kenan, I'm into it. I think it, it looks two hundred and forty turbocharged horsepower, Kenan. That's yeah, the same as the E36. Imagine M3. how fast it could go around the track. God, that's, is that true? Yeah, E46 M3, or E36 M3 was that's 240 true. horsepower. Wow. Yeah. E36 M3 needs more power. <laughs> well, I guess this does too then, huh? Well, this, is a fu- this was an time. executive saloon, okay? Well, so this that, was the that kind was of car. with four doors. Do you know who bought this in 1996? People like him. Who yeah, were like, yeah. they, want, they wanted a little bit of that's sportiness, true. but like right. not too much. Why don't you? Of course, I would have <laughs> bought it in like 2004. The, right, you would have bought it used. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, of course. And Why don't I have a Volvo? It's a great question. It's a very you brand. I really wanted a uh, V50 for a long time. I think it's almost too long stick. nose, though, for Filippo. I, I think would kill for a V70. Wood center console. We I would about kill a for a V70. <laughs> hey, Kenan, pull up V70 sales. <laughs> Just type in V70 there. 
Oh, you don't have to type in vulva. <laughs> It'll only be 70. <laughs> to take longer. You don't have to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Ken and Scream. We've sold some for seven grand. You <laughs> could 6,700 bucks. Yeah. Would have gotten you into one. I bet they're all no reserved. 8,300 would have gotten you into one. Have right. we sold any um, non... Oh, you tra- did you just do ours? No, you didn't. No, no, just be 70. Okay, can you filter for manual, please? No, That's no, filter for, go, do, do cross countries. Do, type in XC70. Oh. That's what he really wants. No, I, pr- I prefer the, the non-raised. Uh, it's the worth non-raised. knowing. The <laughs> Right. D- Doug has an has a E-class wagon all-terrain. So now he's all in on all-terrain. Body vehicles. cladding. Yep. Look, look at what these are selling for. Even that. that, that, that I strongly considered that 2012 that one? I know, the one I that sold for 13? I considered it. That's a bargain. If I didn't already own a station Where was wagon. this car? This was in California? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where? Northern? Uh, San Juan Capistrano for just, thirteen grand. I would have driven I already own a twenty fourteen station wagon. Look at this interior. I don't know that Pull I need up the another interior, can I? early twenty tens. You could have had this, right? Instead, you have that Designo <laughs> interior. <laughs> Correct. So that embarrassing logo on the. Uh, on it's the not dash. embarrassing. I'm proud of it. You're embarrassed by it, of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I bet you've thought about taking it off. No, <laughs> I don't modify my cars, Kenan. Uh huh. Okay. So, um. Someone just wrote into the comments and said, Doug is the kind of guy who says a Bosch refrigerator is an NA non-auto. Ooh. I think it's definitely NA. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting question. Does a Bosch refrigerator have like a, how does it work? It's like any other refrigerator. But how does, that, how does all that work? <laughs> Plug it in. I don't think we have time. The, okay. R- <laughs> the R8 is, clo- is, uh, is winding Ooh, down. So we're bedding, at the R8 is winding down. Oh, no. Ooh, bid. Ooh. One twelve nine. Filippo, can we always when we always have people on, we talk about our bidding strategy. How would you? Oh, sure. You bought a car on cars and bids. I did. What was your bidding strategy? I, I went up in small increments. You was did small my strategy increments. this time. Filippo's is, the cheapest man I've ever met, so no surprise that Filippo's uh-huh. going to go up in small increments. He probably. I, I think that, that there is a real differential strategy between no reserve and reserve auctions for this. Small increments for no reserve. I I think so because your next bid could actually win it. If there's no res- if there's a reserve, I think big bids to get really close to the market value. And then potentially smaller bids thereafter. I think you're dead wrong. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> because I think if you show up with a bid here on this car at 119, everybody's going to run away. Right. That's true. But even if it was no reserve, yeah, they'd be fair, terrified like, of you. They'd be like, oh, that guy's I, got 119 I, grand. Two years ago, I bought an E350 wagon off mm-hmm. cars and bids. Yeah, what'd you pay? Uh, $27,150. Ooh, damn. Yeah. Including uh, the fee? No. I can't uh, believe you remember that. Okay, this is coming to an end, coming to an end. Oh, last second bid. Very late, last second bid. Don't do that. Very dangerous. (laughs) Don't ever do that. That's the biggest strategy point. Don't don't, don't do that. You can bid in the, when it's 59 seconds left, guys. It doesn't change anything. Oh, Kenneth's going to scroll down to call out the person who did it. Special one. Special one, playing uh, playing dangerously there. But at the the end of my auction, we were at about market value. I, I didn't want to pay that. There was like an ending point. But you were afraid to go higher. I, I went in like large-ish increments. I don't know, $500 or $1,000 up to the mid-20s. But then after that, there's, right. a, there's, a, there's a limit. After that, you wish that you could have gone up in increments of $5. <laughs> if only. <laughs> if only. God, that would be deep. But then I won it. And the guy I, remember, I bought it from recently has sold two other cars with us. When we were launching this site, I remember having the bid increments discussion. And trying to figure out, you know, what to yeah. do with that. We've since changed them multiple times. Oh, so we did it, we got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. We, we originally had bid increments that were too small at too high values. It made bidding just. Yeah, that's so what would happen. Slow. At 100 grand, it was still like 250 yeah. bucks, and people would get into bidding wars over $250 yep. on a $100,000 car. And it was like, no, sir. <laughs> no. <laughs> Cannot have this go for 20 hours. I will. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that, that auctioneer, oh, I keep forgetting his name from, um, from Gooding. Who just goes, I will not accept that number. <laughs> Someone That's has replied in the chat, the best bidding strategy is to always be prepared to walk away. No. You got, the best bidding strategy is to win at all costs. Yes. They're, said as a proprietor. I, I think of you, I think, <laughs> now bid more and give us more money. I think setting your, yeah, setting your number and generally sticking to it so you don't have any regrets about buying the car uh, is important. That's I insane. do legitimately but believe in bidding. You will no, not do that. Yeah. Nobody, nobody yeah, no, does you, that. You get that is caught why up a lot it. of people also have people bid by a proxy. Like at auctions, they'll send people to inspect the cars and bid on them that way. So that like there's a number, they're not going to go over it because it's their job not to. Yeah. Right. Um, so like if you're strict with yourself, sure. Um, but that said, most of the time you probably will exceed it. So, you know, it, just, you, you do get caught up in the bidding for sure. 
Oh, yeah. you get caught up and then you, all you want to do is buy the car. I still, right. That's how I feel still. For example, there are a few cars I'd like to buy on the site oh, right please now. Please give us some examples. Um, the, um, the Ram truck. Can, oh, can yeah, you pull yeah. up the Ram truck? Look. Oh, wow. You had it ready. I was going to talk about it. It's so cool. This is the finest truck we've ever auctioned on Cars and Bids. If, some, if you are interested in a truck and you want a Chevy and you want it to be new, you're wrong. You actually <laughs> want this. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Here are all the great things about it. And by the way, Filippo and well, Kenan know that. nothing about trucks, so I'm just going to have to I'm, carry this I, one. He's from Ohio. I lived in Wisconsin for a long time. We okay, all right. Trucks. You take us through it. No, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this truck, this is the... the You'll the, note, by the way, watchers, he's going to the, the auction description. In my, in my opinion, this is the best um, body style of the Ram, yeah. which was sold, I think, from 95 to 02 or 03. So this is the best body style. And it sure. just looked the coolest because it had these fenders that, that made it look like the person was showing up at your house with a shotgun. You know what I mean? Like, they were going to do some stuff. And it was so, in Twister, so that's something. It was in Twister, and it was, it was great in Twister. In Twister. It was now, great. the Twister guy, Bill Pullman, Bill Paxton, Paxton. He, didn't have, <laughs> he didn't have a dually. Right. If, if only he had, he had yeah. <laughs> if he had a dually, maybe, maybe the Twister wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't have killed him. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember it's been 30 years. Since that movie came out, but the point is this: I've been trying to think during this whether I actually remember the plot. He of drove the movie through and a I house in the truck at one point. I remember that. Right. This is final model year, four x four, dually. It has the Cummins engine and it's four wheel drive, and it only has forty thousand miles. Yeah, this is like insane. the coolest truck that has ever existed in the history of the world. Yeah, it's up there. Naturally, it's in Texas. Yeah. Naturally. You want to go out, out of the engine for this thing? Those are great. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for showing us the alternator, Ken. Kenan, do you have any thoughts? It's a big truck. <laughs> <laughs> what would no, you I don't do know much about truck trucks. Like this? What would what, I do? What would your first act mm. be? Or if you were the park it somewhere and not think about it? I, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't, I'm just not into. I just don't have a use for a pickup truck, and I, you know, don't really have that much interest in them. I think they're. I think it's cool. I also respect how clean and nice this one is, and also to see one of these with forty thousand miles on it is insane. People drove. Most things. of them are. Yeah. 250, 300,000 miles. Especially with the Cummins, yeah. Yeah, pretty common. So to see one that's like, I think it's, this is the right color. Um, also, to, I think it just looks <laughs> great in red. Like, it's just a cool truck. Can it bring us back to the R8? Which is still going. The R8, the R8 is, still is still going. going. 16,277. 16,277. Speciale I wanted cars, 766 are really going back and forth here. On A and $500 increments. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Come on! For, for a little bit there, they're going just slightly. Or Speciality 1 is going above the minimum increment. Someone Barely. replied that the SRT10 pickup is the coolest. That's a good point. SRT this is 10, the second yeah. coolest. Yeah, but this is the better generation. The SRT10 is maybe cooler, but that's exactly worse right. generation. If they had done an SRT10 on that right. gen. Right. Oh. Now, the first gen Ram is, is the really crazy one. Yeah, you've never seen one. I, I have, but why is it? Why do you think it's crazy? Because, like, what was going on there? Right. right. <laughs> what was happening with that? Kenan? Thoughts yes. on the R8 closing? <laughs> wow, another well, bid. Speciale coming back oh, yeah. in. Oh, the Volvo 850R already sold in the time that we were discussing. Mm -hmm. for, for, what did it sell for? What did it sell for? Uh, 4600 US. Yeah. You know you can go past auctions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. I wasn't necessarily going to reference the $4,600. Ah, that's fine. It's Volvo it's 850R. It's a true mileage unknown 850R. Just cool. Kenan, I love that we have cool stuff for that. It's site, cool for that kind I of just money think it's too. Cool. That's a very cool car for Kenan, not a pull lot up a money. question. We're going to answer a question while the R8 is still going. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Whoo. Okay. First question. Let's start at the top and go down. Josh, <laughs> when, was, when was the last time you thought about the Consulier GTP? Occasionally, Josh. <laughs> Filippo? Yeah. Almost never. Really? Never? Yeah. Almost never. <laughs> Comes up sometimes. I, I thought about it recently. Oh, I thought about it recently because I watched the Cars movie with my son, and there's one in it. One of them car, one of the animated cars is. I think he's in the background, like it's not. He doesn't have a speaking Got role. Got it. Uh, but he's he's there. Did you tell your? Did you teach your son about the Consulier GTP? Uh, yeah. No, I said <laughs> nothing to him <clears throat> for ah, a lot of reasons. Um, okay, Kenan, this one's for you. Carol writes: If the M3 Touring was available in the U.S., would you consider buying one? I actually, I actually would. I think really? that's a very special car. You know, if it were like offered, um, but here's the thing: if it were ever offered here, uh, knowing BMW, they'd only offer Tip. it with an automatic, yeah. and that's significantly less attractive. To when me. I was at the last BMW press event, I was at one in Scottsdale in March, and I told them straight up that if they sold the M3 wagon here, I'd buy a new one. So I'd said you'd get one, personal, Guaranteed. one sale. 
<laughs> would you so I'd have to follow through on that. Right. Yeah. You saw the i5 wagon? Yeah. Beautiful. Looks nice. It's fine. The M5 wagon is coming here. Are you going to buy one? No, I didn't commit to that. <laughs> <laughs> we committed to the M3. Um, Kenan, would you actually buy the Touring over the sedan? You're, you're a sedan man at heart. Yeah, but that will be the special one. And that mm. is like the, and like it is such a wonderful car to drive. And I, and I actually love the way the Touring looks on that car. It's just certain wagons I think look kind of awkward and, and gangly. Um, I think like the, the, the E39 Touring doesn't particularly doesn't really work for me. Really? I don't really love the way that car looks. Really? Um, but the E34 Touring looks right. Like it just looks, that looks correct. I disagree with you generally. I think every wagon has looked better than the sedan, except. I also have an exception in mind. The Volvo, v, the original Volvo V70 and S60. The S60 oh, is a I don't agree with beautiful that. car. I think that the second generation S60 and V60, I think the sedan looks better. The, you the, th- do you think the looks better than the original no, no, S60 or no, V60? No, 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 no. The original V60? That's a beautiful... Can it pull picture? <laughs> <laughs> Look at Volvo V60. Yeah. From I admit that the S60 of that gen... and up, I think. I don't know. Yeah, you, the blue one, the Polestar. You think the, the sedan looked better this than generation this? Generation, Polestar excluded, this generation in general. I think the S60, early S60s look better than the early V60s. Wow, wrong, but wow. Pull up a picture of the S60, can I? It, it's just such a beautiful sedan shape. Wow. Have, have so really we have a similar opinion lid. about this, just a slightly different model. <laughs> right. Yeah, You're yeah. right. It is the, a beautiful that, that, that sedan shape. One, it, 2017 is great. It is fun. a beautiful sedan shape. That is true. Like, it's like a short trunk. Short trunk. Little hatchbacky. When this car first came yeah, out. Yeah, 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 Click on that. Thank you. When this car Look first came out, which was like 2010, yeah. 11, there was like the first one I saw, not With the, the Polestar, it was just a regular one. With the orange? It was red, I think. Mm-hmm. There was a guy at Emory who, who had like a, a, a employee who had bought one, and I walked up to him and I was like, hey, man, nice car. And I bet he was all excited because he had just bought like the first S60 right. in Atlanta. Right. <laughs> no one, I bet no one has said anything to him since. Uh, it's a beautiful car. You it is. It. I don't agree with your S60 V70 split. Though. The thing I, the problem that I have with that V70, that yeah, Gen V70, the, shoulders. the S60 had this beautiful front end that was sculpted, mm. and then the V70 it just kind of like 90 degrees. What's that about? Right. It didn't look right. It was like that 09 SL where they facelifted the front but didn't facelift the rear. I'm, I'm a very practical <laughs> man. There. So I'm, I'm okay with that because I want the practicality. Right. You, then that makes sense. I think that, that's why they did it. Yeah. Because from a practical perspective, wow. it was better. But in my opinion, it didn't look as good. Hmm. Kenan, do you have any thoughts on uh, mid-2000s Volvo station wagons? Nope. Next question. <laughs> Wait, go back Stop to the R8. Man. This is really happening here. This this car has gotten like fifty thousand bids yeah. since we were watching a big, big jump. Nine. Perhaps finally, the one was like, "I'm going to put this had guy just away." Done it. Yeah. yeah, that's right. If he had just done it ten grand ago, he would have scared away cars seven sixty six, unquestionably. If you're comfortable out. getting to that number, Let's find just out. Do it. Did he scare him off? Let's yeah, see. he scared him off. Car seven sixty six ain't going to go to one twenty. Come on, Speciale one's got this thing in the bag. Boom, Boom sold. sold. Click on Speciale one. What else he bought? Very nice, Mr. Speciale. Let's see. Who? He bid on a Mercy? Bid on a Mercy and, an and the low mileage F430. Yeah. He's Very legit. Nice. What else did he comment on? Only the R8. I like this dude. He's bid on the right cars. Yeah. Yeah. That's some good, good um, taste Kenan, in those cars. you drove around this morning in that 430. Speaking of. I did. did yeah, you? I did. I just want to be one on the site. I brought, uh, I drove around a manual F430 Spider. You went and got that from, wow. Yeah. And well, the, it must be nice to be. Kind of. <laughs> it was, it was, honestly, it was yeah. nice. It's, it's this is the only nice part of the work in the manual F430. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, a stick F430. Manual converted F430, but yes. Hey, go to the M3. We got, got a good M3 the, coming the up. Here. This one is a good uh, M3. Yes, because I had to go to Elite Finish as yeah. well to pick up. Tell us about morning. the M3, Kenneth. So this is this is kind of an interesting yeah, one. So it's an E43 or E46 wow. SMG M3, and it has a supercharger on it. But they've retained the SMG, which is kind of interesting. If I were going to mod an SMG car, personally, I would add the manual, but uh, it's wow. kind of an yeah. interesting Kenan build. Kenan can it's hardly hide the derision in his voice. <laughs> Kenan, I don't think he's trying. Kenan, the dude put, put a blower on this thing. He wanted to drive it. He wanted to daily it, but have power. I mean, he did that. <laughs> Look at that. Man, this is a tight How much engine. power do you think this is making with the blower? Is that accurate? <laughs> um, okay, so there's no actual... It doesn't look like we... It doesn't look like there was a... Don't yeah, be a dino guess. sheet performance. Don't be a guess, yeah, but, uh, other, other performance mods too. A lot of yeah, a lot of performance modifications on this one, which which is nice. Uh, and I actually think it's pretty tastefully done. I mean, you can mm-hmm. obviously see the intercooler, 
But other than that, like, and it being lowered. Um, very tastely done. Steel gray is also very, a nice color. Good restraint. Yeah. The question I have with this one that I'm very confused about is why is there such a giant brake pedal on this car? Well, you couldn't That's, stop. I mean, this person really wanted to be able to stop. and uh, They're well. trying to stop. Dude, they blew it. It has a supercharger. It's got 600 horsepower probably. You've right. got to be able to stop. Well, yeah, right. th they don't want to miss. They want to both feet on the brakes to stop <laughs> with that car is what they want to do. Because that's, that's an incredibly, especially for a car that's, you know, Ten only you're has two pedals. Point. I mean, that if occupies with a third pedal. Would you like XM3 just to compare the, the brake pedal? Sure, I'll have another, to pull up another If you put this much power into an E46 M3, sold, by the way, for $28,000, if you put this much power into an E46 M3, you would also want a big brake pedal. That you have to awesome. stop. Yeah. So yeah. there's a normal brake pedal for reference. You know what you don't understand, that Kevin? That's too small, <laughs> given that you have the, the compartment. You know what you don't well, understand, Well, because it's Kevin? designed to have a manual with yeah. another pedal. That's why and I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but you know what you don't understand? The bigger, the more power the car has, the bigger the brake pedal. It's a pretty fairly traditional... <laughs> Well, thank you. But nonetheless, How large is also, the brake pedal? It's, it's 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 only only yay big, you know. But <laughs> this is also this the is not Ford GT. When Carl supercharged, the, when Carl put the tune on the Ford GT, had to put a bigger brake pedal. That's <laughs> <laughs> inspection. Thank you. I'm glad you're so entertained with yourself over this. But uh, of but course, he calls out the size of the brake pedal. Well, it's just the thing that's I mean, it so like really What is this stuck. color? Steel gray. It really looks nice. How come we're not part of this? This is not around in our lives. Why, Why is your M5 not this color? Right. Because it isn't. I don't know. What <laughs> we didn't tell. It wasn't offered. In but it, do you see uh, this? No, it, it wasn't. It was offered in anthracite, and then it was offered um, in sterling gray. What but I there, but I have seen one. Um, so uh, the guy who manages Matt Farah's uh, place bought one that was individually finished oh. in this color, and it looked it looks phenomenal. Ryan serviced it at E39 stars, and it looked amazing. I why didn't it, you buy it? Yeah. I don't know. Why didn't he buy it? No, why, why didn't, didn't you buy it? Because I already have one. I don't well, yeah, two. but you could have had a steel gray one. Yeah, Listen, if the, white, one if the correct white 4 GT came up with blue stripes, old dirty over there is going away. I'd I'm have to wash it first, <laughs> probably. Yeah, for those who don't know, Doug, we had torrential rain in San Diego yeah. earlier this weekend. Doug it thought it would be wise to go. Go on, Mike Graham. Doug thought it would be wise to go and, um, and drive around in the rain in the 4 GT. Uh, he had somewhere to go. He only had one car. Um, You're not signed into the gram. Oh no, also, no. also <laughs> and I don't he know what my login to, is. He's Google searched <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I just typed Instagram and it came. I thought it would automatically search for whatever. God, I love Kenan. Kenan, Kenan no, is I'm so unabashedly on Kenan. Computer, Philippa. We have a Carson Bits account. All right, Kenan, pull up some questions. Let's. Right. Right. Can people ask Kenan crazy questions? Um, hey, okay. Doug, GMA T50 review. When? Alex Alexander asks GMA T50 review when I can. I'll I'll do exactly what he does with for his response for all these. <laughs> you got one. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's his response. The reason he hasn't done it yet is he hasn't been invited to, and no one who has one has asked him. And that, and he, I would imagine you would do it when it comes out. Am I accurate? And is that all accurate? Yeah. All yeah. right. Paul asked, which would you rather have, the Ferrari 599 or the Mercedes SLR? Filippo, I think you could take this one as a big fan of exotic <laughs> sports cars. <laughs> well, do you the, know the, what the these two of cars course, are? Of course. Legitimately, I do. Do you think he knows? <laughs> he doesn't know about the base wheels on the McLaren the SLR, though, I'll tell you that. Okay, Filippo, there were two wheel designs on the SLR. I can picture this one is going to blow your mind. It's, it's not going to blow your mind as much as mine because I you don't care about exotic cars. Don't type in base, base wheels. wheels. I don't just type in SLR and eventually... SLR wheels. That was 20 minutes of, uh, for me last night on the internet. And then go to images. Yeah, okay. Let's see if I can find them. They are... Okay. This might continue to... Every, every photo here is the one that I associate yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You're right. But the, it's that green car, Kenneth. Yeah. Now, that green car is an MSO. So, MSO is, ma is remaking SLRs. Like, they're upgrading them and updating them. Okay. But that wheel was offered as the base wheel on the SLR, apparently, when it was new. Wow. Now, all, MSO is putting all of these wheels on them now, so it's not as uncommon as it was. But, like, I found, I dug up a press picture last night with the base wheel on it. Wow. <laughs> Do you believe that? That's, not the little, the little spinny guys. I'm that's debating which I like more. The spinny guys. Yeah. I mean, the car was ugly, and the spinny guys made it uglier, and I think that that, like, added to the appeal. <laughs> it does. I wanted an SLR bad. I never really, really? felt the SLR was Yeah. Funny. I always thought they were cool. I think it's cool as hell, but Kenan and I discovered the problem. Well, well there are a number of problems. I mean, it's got a five-speed <laughs> torque converter for one. 
<laughs> but, yeah, okay, that was a problem. But yeah, you remember the biggest problem? Remember when we found this out that, that brakes are like fifteen oh, a quarter? Well, <laughs> yes, maintenance. Yeah, maintenance on the SLR is not for the faint-hearted. That's for sure. No, brakes are like fifteen a quarter on the Carrera GT, also, but it's a Carrera GT. Right, it's the a car, that car is one point three million dollars. This is well, and it's like know, the greatest car. It's a little harder to justify dumping sixty grand into brakes on an SLR, which is worth. 250 and kind of not right. so great. And then you got to go into gear. Right. You know. But at least you get to flip the thing up on top and press the button. You, you know, flip the stuff. thing up and press yeah. the button. Have we asked Hoovy about this as, as an owner of an SLR McLaren? Uh, about these base wheels? Uh, just about, you know, ownership experience. He uh, would breaks. tell you, I have no doubt, that it has been fantastic. Because his flood damage salvage titled one is has been, no, I'm, I don't remember. But I think he got, it had some issues, right? Wait, what's the answer to the question? Five nine nine. Can the correct answer? Uh, yeah, five. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the SLR is like. Kenan, I mean, the SLR is a is a hyper car. You've driven it too. It's yeah. like I have. And I've it driven is both. Not, it's the brakes. Oh god, the brakes. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Everything all at once. It's, the brakes are bad. The brakes are bad. You can't it's see the front way of it too heavy in front. Very long. Very it's heavy. way too long in front. I don't think it sounds. The that interior nice is not good. Beautiful. It does not sound good. It's heinous. Okay. I and mean, it's an ugly car. The answer is the SLR. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cool. If, okay, if you're walking around down the street, down Park Boulevard. And, and I a, saw an SLR. Well, and a 599 went by, you'd be like, wow, 599. Yeah. And you'd text me, and I'd be like, I don't believe you, you don't have a picture. <laughs> if an SLR went by, you would run after it with your camera going, oh, SLR, SLR. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess that's true. But I, buy, a car, I buy cars that I like to drive, yeah, not what true. other people think. It it might be true. You would too. I would do it a little faster, but yeah. He wouldn't know. He wouldn't know which one was which. <laughs> He'd be like, "Is that an SL like, coupe? I don't understand." Right, right. No, that's more way more beautiful. Okay, uh, another question. Go to Thomas Maple. Oh wait, sorry, sorry. I was looking at a different one that was about a Panamera. Ryan, it's a 2012. Oh, Panamera is oh, a 2012 Thomas. Panamera 4S with 60,000 miles, a good daily for 30 grand. Every week on this show, we get asked the question: Should someone buy a heavily used four-door oh. Porsche <laughs> for like six? Gra- it's like it's like a Cayenne Turbo for like ninety-one hundred dollars, and the answer is always yes, hundred <laughs> percent. Now this blew me away because I recently had to do some Wait, research. Wait, twelve grand? Cl- what the is cheapest that? Cheapest one we ever sold. <laughs> what? This was last year, twenty ten four S. Why didn't all of us buy this? It had one hundred sixteen thousand seven hundred miles. But if memory serves me, it, yeah, no, or it had, it had an accident as well. But nonetheless, twelve. I don't care if it had an accident. I don't care if it rolled over. Color. Now I got to tell you something. So in ten, I worked at Porsche. Not quite in ten, but right after this car came out, those wheels were the base wheel on the four S. You like couldn't get them. You would go into a dealer and you'd be like, hey. Wow, those are I so want a base. 4S Panamera, like the cheapest one you can get. And they were like, okay, but you have to order the wheels because these base wheels are so decrepit. <laughs> but this person pulled it off. Yeah. Dude, 12 grand? What, is it? what was the question? The question, the that question the guy was, asked? so for 30 grand. For, for 30, one, dude, one Ryan, with, don't pay 30, 60, pay 12. <laughs> miles on it. I mean, personally, I think you buy with a little more miles for half the money and then like, you know. <laughs> half the money, too. I mean, genuinely. Like, uh, wh- why don't we all drive Panamera? How can you go wrong in this $12,000 Panamera? Let's pretend that the engine fails as you're leaving the dudes who has sold it to his which house. Is, which is possible. With which is possible. Quite. You, the car, tw- it's 12 grand. It, parts have to be worth at least a large component of that. So then you would bring it to your yeah, house, your and, and every time someone needs a part, you would go <laughs> out to the car. <laughs> right. Right. Kevin's like, great experience. Mm. And wait, <laughs> just scroll up a little bit. There was a different Panamera question. If you scroll up the time about I Wait, I had there was a great question uh, down below. W211 E55 station wagon or Panamera in the same price oh range. Oh my god, they are in the same price range. I mean, oh wow. Yeah, they are? I didn't even think about that. Okay, W211 E55 wagon, which was the supercharged one that was sold from 03 to 05. Or a Panamera, or a Panamera well, in the I mean, same price range. I think personal. I mean, no. He's in, I'm in Florida. The use case for the car would be drives longer than an hour. You got to get the Panamera. And they, that is occasional, dr- occasional drag you. racing. Oh, and the yeah. occasional drag race, because he's in Florida and the cops look the other way. You know, at night, the streets are flat. Or right. and, straight. and this guy, he had a W211, and uh, his wife hates that he sold it. So I think oh. that answers the question Dude, right there. You no. should definitely get a 211. You get a Panamera. Did, I agree with Panamera. I, I didn't the, even the think the about E55 this. A 211 E55 wagon. newer. Kevin and has that great one. Did you see it up there today at Elite Finish? He doesn't notice it. No, I saw there was a blue 360 Challenge Jolly. I went and looked at that. <laughs> there was some automatic Mercedes, too. I didn't see it. I didn't. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I personally think what, that the, one the, piece the, of the real consumer advice, though, the Panamera only has four seats. The 55 has five. 
Um, that extra seat could make a difference. It has seven. The A55 had a third row. The O3 to O5, all, all, right. all the 211 right, AMG right, wagons right. offered right. a third row. They didn't all have them, but they all offered them. 75% more seats. More seats. But the Panamera is just such a better car. The tech is better. It has PDK. Yeah. It's like, I didn't even think about this. Because an E55 wagon is like 30. And that gets well, you like, 30 gets you like a three-year-old Panamera turbo. <laughs> <laughs> so Panamera, true, Panamera is a better car. E55 is cooler. And yeah. has... 75% more seats. So it depends. If you want to be cool and get a car that you, you know your wife likes, then uh, the W211. I know, but the Panamera is the better car. But the Panamera is the Especially better car. Especially if you're driving so an hour Then again, away, this yeah. is like the SLR 599 question. Moments ago, the 599 is clearly the better car, but I selected the SLR. Right. And I selected the better car. I now I'm selecting now the better car. But the difference in the SLR yeah. and the 599 is this is a car you're screwing around with on weekends. Right. right. This is a car that dude's driving and he's got to drag race people on, at stoplights and, right. and, and hope that the Stewart, Florida Police Department doesn't arrest him. <laughs> <laughs> but drag racing somebody with people facing rearwards is cooler than not. I that it is. That. that is pretty cool. I've done it. It was great. Wow. Um, okay. There so not, not particularly right helpful, but those are... We okay. have Can great questions here today. Closing? We have great questions here today. Kenneth, sure. yeah, would you ever consider... Go left one. Go left one. Left one. Jason Hannon. Kenneth, would you ever consider buying a car with an automatic transmission? If so, which one? Apparently an electric um, there Fiat. Are, there are some cars I like that are only offered with automatics. Like, for instance, the Mercedes uh, CL65. Like the, oh, sure. the, yeah. I adore that car, but obviously only an automatic. But in that particular case, I think it kind of... It just suits the car and what yep. it does. You put your foot down and wait and then... You're gone. Bentleys are the same and way. Bentleys are the same way. Um, so there are some, and Rolls Royces too. So there are some cars that I would definitely consider as an automatic. But generally, uh, I'm trying to keep the street going for as long as I can. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure I'll get tired of driving a manual someday. No. But for now, I really enjoy it. So I'm sticking with manual transmission cars. Damn. But good way, question. Yesterday, on our on my, my way home from d- dinner, my wife explicitly pointed out that we should always have a manual car. Oh, wow. So. Well, good. I'm, I will forever I'm, have a manual car. I am a big supporter. Flip, but trying to hang on to his European heritage. Okay, Correct. scroll down. There was some other good. Wait, wait. Go back yeah. to that. There was some really. There was some really good question that I deeply wanted to answer. Keep going. Go, <laughs> go. Further down. He's gonna tell me I went too far. So nope. Further down. Further down. Oh my god, he went too far. No, I'm kidding. That's good. Um, okay, how about this one? AK Driving asks: If you were a dictator of the U.S., would you eliminate the 25-year import rule? Why or why Ooh. not? How would that work? Um, uh, yeah, okay. So look, the 25-year import rule, which is not a law, by the way. It's a regulation. Uh, it came... Well, I, people say that it was a law as if the legislators passed it, but they didn't. And that's a very important distinction because it just yeah. sort of happened. Yeah. Um, several car companies were, uh, were advocating for people to stop importing cars yeah, and yeah. getting them cheaper. This was happening to Porsche. It was happening to BMW and Mercedes-Benz in the 80s. You could just import cars. And... So they, 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 they got upset and they lobbied the U.S. government to make this import law, which they did. And now we have, our, we have to abide by it. And it's not the greatest thing for car enthusiasts who want newer cars. But there is some benefits to it for, for automakers and for public safety. And, but, so I would get rid of it and move it down to a 12-year import Ooh, Why 12? Canada 12 15. seems like it's about right. The, it was a protectionist thing. <clears throat> it was a protectionist thing for the automakers, yeah. which I get. They're trying to run a business. They invested a lot of money into the market, you know, et cetera. So, but you, so you don't necessarily want it to be zero. But 12, like no one who's buying a 13-year-old car is also considering a new car. Sure. Right? You know, a 13-year-old car is 2011. 2011. And then that gives us 2011 cars, and I would go buy an M5 wagon. Oh. E60. Can we talk about the one. GT63 four-door special edition? Kenan, go ahead. It's green. <laughs> um. <laughs> No, these it is green these cars have always been interesting to me because it, like I kind of lost like what Mercedes wanted it to be because they wanted a four door version of their two door sports car is what yeah this it was, made no sense right. which made no sense at all but have, having been in one the performance have you is, driven like, one outrageous I actually, no I didn't drive it I rode passenger in it but it blew me it was like it was unbelievably probably fast. the best driving four door car I've ever been in my entire life that's no. that is a bold claim. Yeah, I know. And I've driven every Panamera, the Panamera Turbos, et cetera, et cetera. This thing, it's so incredible. And they don't make it anymore, you know. Right. They got yeah. that's the GT43 and the GT53 now. There was, you could buy this that's car for like car. nine How seconds. Many horsepower, that's 500 or 630. Six. How many torque? More than Courier GT. More, yeah, let's see. 664, 664 six, pound feet. Four, man. Oh, that's Jesus. so serious. That is so serious. But wow. man, is, this, is it cool. Um, and yeah, I guess that since they don't make 
I mean, Mercedes has made it very Although clear. Although this is a 23, so are they making it? I thought I they got rid of the GT63. 23 is the last year. I think so. Oh. But I, to be honest, it's not a I think that, that might be true, that closely. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that might be true, though, because it's true for the E63 and some other, as we know, AMGs for I, I, reasons Mercedes yeah. never told us. I legitimately wonder what the last minute will bring here, because MSRP we, we have in the gallery, and it's 220 or something like that. 220. Um, but these depreciate. Yeah, they lost yeah, some they value. Lose. They lose value quickly. They they um but man, I want one. Every time I see it on the road, I think to myself, if I was, was more legit, one. I would have one of these. 222 was the MSRP. If you were more legit, one. you would have one of these. I agree with that. But I'm not, and I have no. it, so I have an E450. Right. All terrain. Right. The floor mats say all terrain on them. <laughs> but yes, if your use case, I actually fully agree with no, you. Yeah. I think but I know, but if, if you were more Every legit, time I see one of these, I think to myself, man. But don't focus on that. You want to focus on being legit? Focus on getting to the point where you can use the career GT's luggage. Luggage, right. That's right. true legit. That's right. my goal, is to get to a financial position where I can, can use the Can you tell the, the people GT's about the luggage? luggage. Career GT comes with luggage. How many pieces is it? Seven? Eight. Eight. Seven. Don't, what do you think? I have an incomplete set? It. That is it might be nine. It might also be seven, to be honest. I'm trying career to GT comes with luggage, and uh, I think there's two types of Career GT owners. Those who can afford to use the luggage and those who can't. <laughs> and I can't. I want to, but it's $15,000 to replace the luggage. And so if I like, was banging it around at the airport, I would damage it. So it's in very nice little bags in my closet. But you can order it new from Porsche still. For $15,000. That's wild. But the fact you can still get it. That's, I want just that's the wild. big bag. Because the, the, the handle on the big bag is yeah. the wood that matches the wood on the shifter. And then the bag, the leather, matches the leather in your car. Now, what you just said is what you hate about most Porsche people right there. But what I want to do with it is I want to take the big bag and then use it and flex on everybody. How much was this just a big bag cost? Uh, like four grand. Well, maybe it's worth it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you saying that imagine you Okay, you, my money. Imagine <laughs> you walk up to a... Airport, you know, I would security, and I would think more highly. Of the you. guy next to you has like a SunTrust over-the-shoulder bag because he's on his 86th plane this month, you know, and he's like right, traveling for SunTrust. SunTrust <laughs> <laughs> is that still a company? <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, still a bank. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I popped out my Carrera GT Ascot Brown with a wood handle. That'd be legit. That would be legit. That'd be pretty cool. I would I'd be enough. like, oh, SunTrust, huh? <laughs> is that still a company? <laughs> <laughs> and it is right how do you know what when did you review this car do you bank with them? um is it a bank even yeah i think so yeah <laughs> it's a financial institution um it's when it came out which was years ago and i loved it yeah. so much so that v8 is one of the it's a how shame that mercedes is killing it off but that is one that of four the four liter twin turbo yeah I well love that um, motor. aston martin also has it so that's such something. a good i mean yes that's true so the db12 which i just filmed and which will go live soon. DB11? Are, are they no, killing DB off the... 12. Not, yeah, not the DB11. The DB12. Are, are, are they killing off the, the engine? We have... There's some conspiracy the theories about this engine. What? Share them. With people. <laughs> you don't know about this? Are you, are you serious? You don't know about this? I vaguely remember them stopping, like, not selling any V8s in 2020. One day, one they just were like, oh, by the way, we're not selling right. any V8 AMG and cars they for a while. for production, but probably some emissions or reason. They, didn't, they never really kind of admitted why. And so that's where What's the conspiracy theory? theories start and end. If I were to go to the Mercedes-Benz online forums, what, what would I learn? I think that You're people saying, assumed just... that it was due to production issues because the COVID was yeah. happening. COVID, yeah. But there were cars at the port. Mm. So there are conspiracy oh, theories. Oh, well, stop there. <laughs> and you, the viewer, can take it from there. <laughs> figure, out, figure out what happened with that. Um, All right, should we go back to some questions while this the bidding continues? Sure, bidding who, continues. We're at 154.786. Who's, who's bidding? Seven, eight, six, right who's bidding? Do you who's know bidding? the bidders? What? Yeah. Right, right now some. it's... Car and Driver 2023. Kenan, give us, yeah. some, give us a question. All question right. us. People, have you asked questions Filippo, today? did you oh ever get your all-road back? I never owned back. an all-road, unfortunately. Filippo, did you ever get your all-road back? A couple years ago, I crushed Filippo's, Audi all, uh, <laughs> Filippo's Kia Spectra next to an Audi all-road. Yeah. He did not get either car Very back. sadly. What happened to the Kia? We brought... The tow truck driver brought yeah, it to a junkyard. To, uh, to a junkyard, okay. Yeah. The, the first time we did that, we did it in a junkyard, which was probably a better idea. Was smarter. Going the, forward, the, the, the guy that. was good, though. The, the tow truck driver was legit. If you haven't watched this video, go watch it, Doug's... <laughs> Crushing of, a, of an all-road. <laughs> we didn't get a release. 
He, um, he may not have been in it, but he definitely hit the cars with a sledgehammer. Yeah, he, yes. That's right. And, and, and he did it well. And he deserved to. Yeah. Um, okay, two questions right here that I want to answer. Number one from Tobe Larone. Best spec Panamera. The answer is, can <laughs> I pull up that $12,000 Panamera? <laughs> That's the best spec. <laughs> what do you can get for twelve? Yeah. Um, Actually, that was a weirdly nice. A very odd spec, but I was into it. It was an odd spec. Yeah, but it was 12. <laughs> I don't care what spec it was. What is that interior Mahogany color? Mahogany metallic. What is that interior color? You have can't even scroll down. Over beige. But why doesn't it just click? Oh, okay, I want to see the color. Look at that. That, that steering that is wheel a is shiny is steering wheel. It looks like plastic. <laughs> but it's so hideous. The, the, the steering wheel design. And the, the steering wheel design was so that. bad. So when I worked for Porsche when the steering wheel was being made, and we couldn't figure out a way, I swear to you, to get paddle shifters and buttons yeah. on the same steering wheel. I'm right. not exaggerating. It wasn't until 2013 that Porsche finally was able to combine. So you, when you got a car, you could choose. <laughs> Paddles, but then it had no buttons, so you couldn't even adjust the volume. Or... You could have this, which those are not paddles. They're like thumb things yep. that you can push forward or backwards. And, but then you had this plastic in the center of the wheel. The whole wheel was like this cheap-looking plastic. Um, I would have gotten, so of course, bad. this wheel because it fits with the 14-inch alloy wheels that this car <laughs> is equipped with. Just I can't believe it. someone bought this for 12 Oh, what a deal. Wild. Yeah. Um, Okay, Kenan, go back to the questions. I want to answer the question that everybody keeps asking me. Doug. Can we get more Doug impressions? Doug, Career GT. There's been a lot of talk about Career GT stop use order with many people, and even Jalopnik bringing up you. Yes. Okay, so there's a guy who writes for Jalopnik who hates me. There's a lot of people in the industry who hate me, by the way. There's this guy who writes for Jalopnik who hates me, and he wrote this article like, Doug, you're using your Career GT, but you shouldn't because you're going to die. Here's the deal. There's a stop use order on the Career GT by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, also known as NHTSA. They've told me that they told all Courage GT owners stop use. And if you look at the stop use order, it specifically says <laughs> this is all true, even though I'm presenting it humorously. They say if you if you there's a joint on the suspension that could corrode, and if it fails, the suspension will fail and you will die. That's what the, that's what the stop use order says, more or less. But what it also says is inspect your joint, and if your joint is okay, you can keep driving. It literally says don't use until you've had your joint inspected. And then you can drive. So I had my joint inspected by both Porsche dealer and Rapassi Motorworks, who serviced the car and put a new suspension like two months ago, four months ago. And it, my joint has no corrosion. So I'm fine and I can keep driving it. All of the Carrera GT owners that I know, they've had their joints inspected and they don't have any corrosion. So we're driving them. Now, in, so, so that's the answer to that. Yes, I'm still driving the car. My joint is fine. Porsche apparently will have parts for this thing uh, in a couple months. In, dis in researching this, I learned something interesting. <laughs> Here we go. The, the NHTSA issues stop use orders when there's a serious problem with a car that could kill people. It's, it, so there's recalls, there's park in, do not park inside, mm -hmm. and there's stop use. There's three <laughs> levels yep. of NHTSA. I didn't know any of this. but there's, So a recall is just like, hey, your steering wheel might fall off, but it probably won't. A don't park out inside is, hey, your car is going to catch on fire. Yep. It probably will. And then a stop drive order, a stop use Chevy order, Bolt. a stop drive Chevy order Bolt. is like, hey, you're going to die. Currently, currently, there are over 200 makes and models of cars subject to an NHTSA stop drive order. Over 5 million cars. Now, this guy at Jalabnik who hates me wrote the article. <laughs> he called me out. He didn't mention all the other cars that are part of the stop drive order. Including Kenan's E39 M5. Yes. Now, before he gets carried away, <laughs> that is for the Takata airbag recall, which was a thing. My car has been inspected for it. It doesn't have it. So much like your car, it is safe to drive, and so I drive it. However, I'm going to read you some of the other cars that are currently under a stop drive order because you will die <laughs> if you drive them, at least according to that Jalabnik article. Kia Telluride, you will die. Nissan GTR, <laughs> you will die. Well. Volkswagen Atlas, you will die. Honda Odyssey, you will die. Only, only the O2 Honda Odyssey. <laughs> Honda CRV, you will die. Kia Optima, death. Chrysler 300, and every Dodge Charger in Chrysler 300, which honestly, even without the NHTSA order. So, <laughs> but that's just the, the stop drive because you will die. And by the way, the Mercedes R63 AMG. Sad. Yeah, all 30 people. Can't the park outside order can and perk back up. Doubled. The E60 M5 is currently under a park outside order. 
I wonder what for. I have to do more research. Probably only should have been. Probably, I mean, just add one more insult to injury with owning that car. <laughs> difficult to outside. own it now. It can also catch on fire in the Kia garage. Sportage, Kia Sorento. Kia Stinger. My Kia Stinger is under a park outside order that I used to have and still Luckily, Porsche park Panamera. Park. All these Panameras. That Panamera, that, that $12,000 Panamera <laughs> parked outside. Which I mean, is good. In fairness, I mean, it's $12,000 pen around base wheels. That thing is getting You do out. not God, want that to burn it. down your house. Hyundai Nexo, the oh, hydrogen sad. car. <laughs> Park oh, outside. 2004 people. Saab 93, but only the Arc. 2005 <laughs> Saab 97, but only the Linear. <laughs> so to answer the question about the Courier GT stop drive, I'm not particularly concerned about it. However, if I owned a... 2006 Mazda B4000, which is also under the stop drive order, I would then maybe Can be I ask concerned. A question? Is the Ford Ranger with the V6 also in that? Same truck. Yes, but only the Super Cab. Oh, so, intriguing. And by the way, the 23 Ranger is also <laughs> under a stop oh. drive. There is yeah. no Ranger you can safely drive right now. I have to now. imagine a significant number of the stop drive cars are Takata airbag recalls, I think there, like a lot the of them are. And I think a lot of people would say the suspension thing is scarier than the Takata airbag thing. But, but I disagree. I mean, if you got in an accident, those Takata airbags have killed a lot of people. Like, seriously killed a lot of people. Yep. Seriously killed. But they have. I mean, because yeah. it, could, it could happen at yeah. any time. You don't know when your airbag is going to deploy. You're going to get an accident, and it could be really dangerous. Yeah. But yep. your car does not have. You promised me. I promise. I have the paperwork to prove it. Oh, damn. <laughs> you took the car to a BMW <laughs> dealer? I had to. Well, of course. It's a recall. I know, but you took your car to a it's BMW. It's the only time I've ever taken it to the dealer for <laughs> anything. <laughs> and which, even then, they scratched the steering wheel trim. <laughs> I was furious. <laughs> which binder is that record in? Uh, that's in volume one. Oh, by the way. By the way, I have... That's not a joke. That question was asked for the benefit of the people. I have, the a, <laughs> I have a conspiracy theory about this Career GT stop drive order. Sure. I love this conspiracy <laughs> theory, by the way. The Carrera GTs, it's been 20 years, and they're now worth a lot more than they were when Porsche sold them. And so they've gotten into the hands of some people that, let's just say, Porsche would like to know, if that makes sense. Oh, so you want to bring it to a dealer. I think Porsche wants to get a handle on who owns the cars right now so that they can get in touch with them as potential customers. And I'm not saying that there's no corrosion, but Porsche has announced they have not had a single part fail, they have not had a single injury or fatality, and they have not had a single incident from this. Uh -huh. So it's like, interesting, you're bringing all the cars back even though you haven't had any problems. And so but part of me is like, I wonder if Porsche is just trying to... Oh, you know, who owns these things now? <laughs> who can we put on our mailing list for the, the electric Porsche hypercar, which I'm sure they haven't sold any of? of Just course. something to think about. You know, I the know, real I do reason think they're doing this. Why? Well, they were sued massively for... No, for there uh, hasn't been any problems. There's some engineer discovered it during, like, durability right. testing. Not a but, single car. Right. But they, oh, they've gone through just generally. a litany of lawsuits <laughs> related to the safety of that car. So I think they're... Okay. But Porsche so has also made a, a, a very defined effort to keep those cars on the road, the pitting issue with the, the cams. They goodwilled a lot of that. Not all of it. You still have to pay for it. But, like, they, they really want the career. They view it as something very important, rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. So the, there's, uh, you know, there's, some, there's something behind that conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's an interesting conspiracy. It's an interesting <laughs> thought. <laughs> now, they wouldn't put it under a stop-drive order. But I think unless they did, no one would come and, and do it. Do the recall. I certainly would. I might not do it anyway. Right. I've this is still going, this AMG GT? Yeah, this AMG GT GT63S um, is still going. The question. Give us another question. Give, one, give oh, Felipe question. Should we take a quick break and talk about one of the cars that we have live right now that's not... Wait, wait, wait. I want to get that question from Chris Stout. How come Doug hates the Lexus LS430? Are you insane? Who would hate the Lexus LS430? That's a fantastic automobile. Every Lexus LS is a fantastic automobile. Yeah. 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 They're I mean, just in their bargains. Pull up a sale or seven. We sell we them for sell like three a week. We sell three yeah. weeks for one nothing. Of our, one of our employees, Andrew, loves Lexus and Lexus, so we have sold quite a few. We truly of them. sell so many of them. I, I mean, mean look these, at I mean, yeah. I personally think the 460 is the better deal because it's a yeah. lot more modern in terms of tech or whatever. Agreed. But I mean, that 04, 10 grand with the ultra luxury package, the, the, you'd run forever. It's comfortable. Also, there was a period of time in like 2010, 2020, excuse me, where when LS 430s were really valuable and LS 400s were really valuable. They've come it's, back to it's, reality. It's slowed down. Okay, here's an interesting concept for you. Here's Maybe a question. That, the 23 grand for both six. Well, some, some of them, the very late yeah. ones with low miles sell for some money. Here's a, a 430 specifically. Here's a question for you. What is the car you can spend the least amount of money on and still blend in in a rich neighborhood? Don't you think that a... No. a an V7, XC70. Early These are XC70. six. These Early are XC70s six. are three grand. We don't sell them because, well, 
There should be Panamera. That 05 LS430 no. is seven. Yeah, that is a lot. Less Pull up XC70s, please. We looked at them earlier, but we'll look at them again. <laughs> we Sleep we sell topic. only nicer ones. We'd go to buy nine, lowest price nine, ninety five, lowest price, thirteen, please. eleven. 79. But, but, We're selling but, LS430s for the, six. The, the, we, we sell only nice ones. Uh, <laughs> but LS430s, we sell them all. Philippe was yes. a nice neighbor. It has to be a nice example. Keep in mind that that, that 04 with 70,000 miles was worth nine. Yeah, Imagine you, with 140. I they, think, they, they're reliable. I think I'm ready for this. Kenan, do you have an answer? The correct answer, of course, is the Chevy Express. No van. You can, for, you can pick one up for two grand on Craigslist, and then you can drive it anywhere because people think you're yeah, a contractor. Everybody you know, told living in California, what was in a lot of rich neighborhoods was the 500E because it was so cheap. Yeah. And you would use that to get down to the oh, beach the, and like. And those are free. What, Sorry, what is the 500E the, cost? The, the Mercedes um, 500E, and I was very confused. Have we sold the 500E? Yeah, I've sold it. Yeah, too. we sold a couple. Really? Of course, no, Mercedes three. too. But yeah. Oh my God! So eight. eight. <laughs> I know. Never has a four thousand dollar car been worth. They're worth money because they get exported to Europe because they were never offered this is over in there Arizona? and people want them to yeah. drive around the Someone city. in Arizona paid eight for I this? I consider buying it. It's in Prague But now. then you know what I realized? Right. I would have to get a toad here. <laughs> but it, won't, it won't make it from, well, from Phoenix. I was vaguely considering one that was in Orange County and he told me, I, mean, I looked and I was like, oh yeah, I would have to. But if I can get it within the AAA 100 mile tow that I have. Yeah, had, that's boom. a short distance tow. I, I, I get put a guy. Yeah. Kevin's got people. Sure. But nonetheless. Uh, um, but I love yeah, so ready. that's a, a California said. take on it. But uh, I agree. The Lexus is probably the right choice there. Okay. I, I said by the Volvo or Subaru Outback. I'm correct. The, or maybe that Panamera. The GT63 has not unsold, unfortunately. Mm. Unsold. Uh, okay. uh, Kenan, yes. I want you to go to two more questions, and then we will end our live stream. we got to okay. talk about at least one other car. Kenan, you can choose the questions, but make them good. Okay. We'll do one question, then we'll talk about one car, then we'll... Thank you. Okay. Make it good. We can talk about the, the 2024 Volvo V60 T8 Polestar Engineer. Oh, my God. There's I would so love. many great questions here, but Kenan's refusing them all. Okay, continue. continue. There are so many great questions. It's difficult to pick one. Um, oh, there are two questions about the Volvo V60 Polestar Engineer. What a good day. <laughs> do you want to take one of those, Philippe? No, no, no I Kenan. Answer that. You're <laughs> choosing the question. Don't let him bully you into a V60 Polestar engineered question. Well, Philippe needs needs a question. You take that one. I'll, I'll do some more. No, 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 no. Kenan, Kenan. You've got this. Right. Uh, one of my overall thoughts on K cars. K cars. Um, I love K cars. I got to drive my friend's AutoZam as AZ1. And it was so much fun because you could redline it in first, second, and third and still only be doing 40. Like, it was just <laughs> like, it was not fast. But you felt like you were doing a million. And it will just, every, and the shifter in that. I mean, I guess because... Mazda knows how to make a shifter with the, the MX-5, and, like, it was just so good. You drove it, too. And then why did you not like the A-Class? <laughs> <laughs> squidgy. Do you think K-Cars aren't squidgy? That car was way more precise than that your A-Class was. That was also the, the, the sportiest. It's probably true. probably safer in a roll. I'll tell you, it's not rolling over by Can reputation. I tell you something that happened with the A-Class? I sold it to Kevin. We had Kevin on the program here. Yeah. Not, yeah. Two short weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. I sold it to Kevin. Kevin drove it home to Houston. This is a great A-Class story. It's a great finish line of this car, okay? Since Kevin has driven at home, I'm on all these Facebook groups like foreign market car sightings yeah. and like weird cars and whatever. Aren't a dozen all? people, Kenan, you're going to love this story, I promise. A dozen people have been like, I spotted this A-class in Houston. I spotted this A-class in Houston. And I've been getting from all sorts of friends and people in all walks of life pictures of the A-class in Houston. And then I was on one of these Facebook groups and a dude is like, hey... I recognize where the A-Class is parked. I did the AC unit right behind it a couple of years ago. And I'm like, what is this? What is this internet? <laughs> this guy is like an AC technician and recognizes the air conditioning. It's not even that people are recognizing the A-Class. They're recognizing the air conditioning unit behind the A-Class. That's the world we're in. Okay, so Kenan, you're going to say that you like kit cars. Yeah, I think they're really cool. And I, I like, I, there's really interesting variety. And we see them more frequently over here because they're imported. And I just, every time I'm like, damn, that's cool. Like, you know. Yeah, we see, we saw a lot on the site. Yeah, yeah and we see that we crazy one right now the, yeah. with the mid engine. Pull, them up, please. Pull up that if one. You it's, just a, it's a Honda. Oh. Type in Honda. K. No. Type in Honda. Yeah, yeah the fine. middle one. That one. Pull yeah, look go at to Kenan's screen. Look at this thing. This I don't know what a, this is. A, a turbocharged mid mounted <laughs> two cylinder. Three cylinder. Two three, three, with, with, I was kidding when I said that before. It does not have three cylinder. Four wheel drive. All the K cars are like turbo three cylinders with 650 cc's, give or take. But four wheel drive. This four wheel drive, mid engine, four wheel drive, hatchback. Think about how many other cars you can say that about. It's a tip, though, right? Yeah, it's auto. 
What? Look at this weird thing. Are those air intakes on the side? Yeah. Well, that's where the, 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 you got to get air to the engine. I love this. I love the car I've ever seen in my life. They put five. Is lug. it? It's four wheel drive. Yeah. Can I have the, this? The, the the person that wrote this l- l- listing was clearly freaking out. Can the company a, buy this? I don't want to buy another car like this, but I would like this car. Can the company buy it? It is being sold by a great seller in California, and it's no reserve. No reserve. Can the company? I'm 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 kind of not kidding. We could do a lot with this. We could take it off road. We could take it on road. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Kenan has ruled. <laughs> All right. We're not doing it then. Um, okay, Felipe, what car did you want to talk about? Apparently not this one, which is uh, crazy. The, the Hertz Mustang. Hertz Mustang. Kenan, have you seen this? Uh, no, but Felipe claims to want to talk about it, so go ahead, Felipe. No, if this is cool as hell. Legitimately cool. Um, yeah, it is, but this is not a Felipe car at all. This is deep anti Felipe. So go ahead, Felipe. Talk this no, car is okay. It. Shelby, Shelby and Hertz rent rent Mustangs. You know, Hertz has these rent a racer Mustangs that you can go and rent like a Shelby Mustang. Go to Hertz and you can rent a regular Mustang, no problem. I mean, that's like all they have. It's the main way I think Ford sells Mustangs, right? Then they have the Shelby ones that are like this special Hertz package that like you can go and rent like an actually fast Mustang. But this one is supercharged, and apparently there have only been two supercharged... Yeah. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> and it's also worth noting, this was never rented out. We're told by the, the, the sellers, which is the, the, the Hertz Corporation is Man, selling look, it. Look, they on even put Hertz on the yep. oil fill. Oh, this is Hertz yeah. selling it? This Hertz, Hertz selling is actually it, selling this car. Th- it was never rented out, they claim. Why did they get it? They just got it and wanted to, like... Well, the, the, out with it for a Shelby year. and Hertz build it together. This was part of their like executive fleet or something like that. The cool part is apparently only two of these were made with superchargers, and this is one of them. It so is legi- cool. legitimately cool. It is legitimately cool. Look at that hood. That thing has just yeah. got a lot of. There's a lot of grunt under there. Yeah. I love these Hertz. Whenever I see one, because the, they've been doing it for years, so a lot of them yep. have gotten into private hands. And whenever I see one, I, it's, a, it's a smile. You have we like do. the Hertz logo on your car, like a loser. Right. But then it's a Shelby Mustang, the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. There was a guy at it's Cars and Coffee, I think it was two weeks ago, who had a 60s Hertz Mustang and a yeah. new Hertz Mustang, both oh. black with the gold stripes. And I was like, Dang. Well, this is the one to do this because is this is like the coolest. Th- they they yeah. do retain value and are collector items, yeah. legitimately. Because this is a GT500. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Oh. Uh, if only we could stoop to such a level. But Kenan, unfortunately, will not buy an automatic car. That's true. Right. Kenan, we could drag race, dude. Me and you. Curve no. GT against Hertz Mustang. I'm, I'm good. Plus the <laughs> M240i can take your car anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I was something. looking up Nürburgring a lot of times yesterday. And the only car that's faster than my car that I find g- good is the Enzo. Okay. Wait, wait, <laughs> really stay in pre-recession rich there. Scroll down there. There was actually one more. Is that an, that's an S550? Ooh, a low mile eclipse. I Get out of here. Go back to the no, question. No, 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 one think more we question. Should, we should look through the cars we have live. We have a low mile eclipse spider. That's cool. Oh, so you were talking about baseball stitching earlier, Felipe. No, this doesn't no. have it. Sorry, yeah. Kenan. No, it does. Baseball optic leather. That's what it says. What? Oh, See, something about the, the, I'm used to the contrasting color. Same. Go, wait, go back to that low mileage eclipse. I was giving him crap, but I want to look at it now. <laughs> go up, up, up. up. See the go. eclipse? Kenna oh, doesn't, Kenna doesn't notice eclipses. 13,600 miles, six-speed manual, V6. This is a dream car. For who? Well, this is the one. This is a V6. That was, that was the optional powertrain. It has a stick shift. It's a convertible. This, yeah, and it, it has no miles. Model. Agreed. It also has those three strikes on the door, which I never yeah. understood. No one yeah. did. Yeah, nobody did. And Kenan, where was it built? I don't know. I'm assuming Ohio is what you're going to say. <laughs> Illinois, same. Illinois, kind of. I mean, <laughs> only Indiana Midwest. separates them. I'm assuming Ohio. <laughs> you, know what's bu- you know what that factory is building now? Do you know? The one in Illinois. Yeah. Ravens. Yeah. Okay. All right. One, one last question, question, and then we have to stop this ridiculous live stream. All right. Well, Filippo, yeah. you pick it. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> He's going to scroll that fast. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask, could you please do a modern review of the Gen 1 manual Honda Insight? For, that people, for those that don't know, is the early question Doug, you're going to choose. Yeah, early Doug did a video with the Honda Insight. Um, do you recall this video? Yeah, I did a video with a first gen Honda Insight, and the dude had modded it for uh, hypermiling to the point where he had a hot air intake. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn in that experience? Um, I hate hypermiling, it gives me a headache. <laughs> Because you're always thinking. I don't like to be thinking much, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> All not, right. 
<laughs> so anyway, it was great. And, and I would actually love to do a video of, a new, of, a, of another first-gen insight. Um, I'm waiting until one comes up on the site. If you have a, for, a great first-gen insight, you want to sell it on Cars and Bids, and it's in Southern California. Kenan, wait, can up. you go back down? There's one more question I want to do that I saw that I just am in love with that someone asked. Go, scroll, 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 scroll. I believe in you. You work that finger, Kenan. Okay, Michael <laughs> asks, if Porsche had built a production version of the 989 concept, would you be interested in purchasing one? Kenan, can you please pull up a picture mm -hmm. of my second favorite concept car ever manufactured of all time Alas, ever? you don't have your model here. Uh, okay, this is the story. I have a model of this car. Porsche made no, no, a concept. No, no. Go, to, go to the Haggerty UK picture. Yeah, yeah, it's, that it's, one. Yeah, exactly. Porsche made a, this was a sedan that they made in the mid-90s as a concept car. They were going to do a sedan. It was, oh, Porsche makes a sedan. It was all scary. And I'm obsessed with this car. I've always thought it was really cool. So I got a model of one. And then uh, last week I dropped it and it shattered, no. it, which oh, I don't no. even understand how that happens. That's so sad. <laughs> it's it's it was a resin model. That's a, I but I, you know what? I had it for years and I was happy about that. I assume that. that you've looked on eBay for another one. Um, yeah, I, had my, I had my time. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you have to stay away from my model cars. <laughs> you know what's you notable? It was like they, they painted just the back. This is some, some rear door damage on this one. What? On this one, Flippo, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I don't think there are more joke, than one of them. But the, 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 the rear door looks a darker shade. It does, but only in the lower picture. The upper picture, it looks fine. Yeah, okay, I'm actually, that's, you're kind of right. <laughs> it's like Ken's M5. All right, there you go. Ken, do you have any parting thoughts for the audience today? Not, not especially. It, it, was, it, was lovely. <laughs> it was lovely to have you on again, Filippo. Well, thank nice you. I, I'm glad on. that we did a show where it feels like none of us know each other, or I think we have no chemistry as a group. <laughs> Filippo, was good. here's a question. You must... <laughs> You must daily an electric truck. Which one? An R1T. Kenan? An electric truck. I mean, it's hard to argue with the R1T. That's and the answer is an R1T. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>